right. I think I think we're good to go. Wonderful. Hello, welcome in everyone. Um, hope you don't mind. We're working in Photoshop today. That's because we are going to be illustrating, or we're going to be finishing up one of my webcomic pages. So we're going to be you're going to be watching me draw a Grayson page. Um, so that'll be as you can see. I've already sketched it <laughs> um, because I don't actually like writing in front of people. So I've already written everything. I've kind of sketched out the whole composition. Um, because a lot of me coming up with compositions is a lot of back and forth. So figured I'd preemptively do this. Um, also a heads up, I don't think I'll be able to finish this one um, while you're all here because these pages do take upwards of like four to five hours. Um, so I'll get as much done as I can, but I don't think I'll be able to finish it. Um, but regardless, hopefully it's enjoyable um, overall. And based on the poll, uh, what the poll was saying, we are going to be talking about comic panel composition um and all that fun jazz so we'll be talking about composition we'll be talking about what else did i say i'll be trying to i'll try to sprinkle in talking about all of it um but that's the one that i'll focus on i suppose yeah comic panel composition pacing and action backgrounds expressions lighting so on so forth um lighting i might not be able to get to but definitely the backgrounds and panel compositions i will talk about those too for sure um but yeah, uh, before we get going, though, you know the drill. Let's talk a bit about the studio. So if you did not know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd, too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school, too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone all right nope nope there we go hello amira rampersad welcome in hello sleepy and hello soft tennis. welcome into everybody yeah it's photoshop today um because we are working on one of my comic pages so i work primarily in photoshop this is where i do my stuff if i was working in perspective so this background up here was done in clip studio um, so most of my perspective backgrounds are done with Clip, but everything else is done in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be working on just the comic as a whole for today. Hello, Aku. Welcome in. No, you've missed absolutely nothing. We <laughs> I haven't even started yet. Hello, Drew. Welcome in. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be going through my process of how I do these. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, usually what I like to do first is to get the boxes and the speech bubbles in there. Um, in things like Clip Studio and Medibank, I know that they have speech bubble creators. Um, Photoshop doesn't have that, so usually I just make them by scratch, which is the... Oh, I need to do that one differently. And that... Oh, have I not been... LOL. I didn't even switch the tool type. Yeah, you're perfectly on time. You have missed absolutely nothing. So all that this is right now is just me putting in the speech bubbles. I'll talk, start talking about the composition when I actually start working on the panels themselves. But currently I'm just working on the speech bubbles. And the thing is, is that Photoshop has these beautiful little effects on the bottom. This should be four pixels on the inside. Just to organize that. I want to get this out of the way because this isn't the exciting portion. <laughs> Other drawing programs have pre-built in speech bubble creators. Photoshop, you have to do it manually, um, which I'm fine with. One day, maybe I'll actually use the... pre-built speech bubble creator. We'll see. <laughs> Even though I only speak English, it's kind of odd to hear someone else pronounce my name. Did I do it correctly, Amira? If it's not correct, please correct me. <laughs> I, I think I've met people with that name before, so I'm like, hopefully it's correct. Oh, did I accidentally click two? Whoopsies, oopsie doopsies. So this right now is the pen tool. The pen tool is in a lot of different programs. I think Photoshop's is the one that works the weirdest. Um, 
it's basically just putting, it's a we, it's like a more advanced selection tool. I think that's the best way I can put it. Um, and that's how I make my tails. Because when I do all that, I can hit control enter. Oops, inverse that. And then it creates all my tails for me. Finally made it to the stream. Hello, Netro. Welcome in, Metro Network. <laughs> Is this the Netra I think it is? If that's the case, then welcome, man. <laughs> Glad you could make it to one. So this one is a different speech bubble because it is overlapped. Ooh, actually. I just realized I did this wrong. Um, Let me fix this a little bit. No, that's correct. This should be moved down further. And that means that this speech bubble needs to move. Yay. So I did this wrong. That's the beautiful thing about this FX thing. And then I can move this down just a smidge. Actually, no, if I was to move this just, oopsie doopsie. It is going to be a lot of me going back and forth, just letting you know, <laughs> especially with speech bubbles. It's usually why I don't stream my process. <laughs> um, but it is a lot of me kind of messing around with what my layers look like and the order that they go in for the most comprehensive. Okay, that should be it for the speech bubbles. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Glad you can make it. Oh, SpaghettiOs. FX are our saviors. Yes, they are. So far, no one's pronounced my name first once, although someone read it as Amina. No one's pronounced my name uh, wrong, although someone read it as Amina for some reason. Amina. If it makes you feel better, you know, my full name, Jessica, I had somebody mispronounce my name once. She had zero excuse. Like, she wasn't, like, <laughs> she didn't have, like, anything other than, like, an American accent. She wasn't, like, any other ethnicity, as far as I could tell. She had no excuse. She just mispronounced it. She was like, how do you, how do you pronounce, Jessica? And I was like, you mispronounced my name. <laughs> of all people. <laughs> she had no excuse. She had zero excuse to mispronounce my name. Um. But here we are. So usually I like to finish my speech bubbles first so I can put down their composition. And then I like to hide the window so they're not in the way while I illustrate. Um, some people ask me, it's like, why do you, um, why do you draw in the entirety of the speech bubble? Or, or why do you draw in the entirety of the illustration if it's gonna be covered up by speech bubbles? It's mostly just for organization's sake. Um, because if I only do part of the illustration, then it, it makes it harder later on, just in case if I need to move something around and it's unfinished under there, then I need to kind of finesse it to get it finished afterwards, which is really weird. Um, and it's annoying, so. A sub called me Nahatra once. Oh. They definitely don't work in Starbucks. Valid. Jessica. Yeah, no, it was it was not a not a fun time. Okay. So the same deal with the, with the boxes in Photoshop. I know in a lot of other programs, they already have it pre-built in, but I have to do it manually um, because Photoshop is technically a photo editing software, not a drawing software. Um, they did cater to illustrators a lot heavier back in the day, but not so much nowadays. So I just use the marquee tool to kind of select the, the boxes that I want. There's going to be extra boxes down here um, that I'm going to have to figure out slightly. How did I do this here? Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That's not too bad. Okay. So I've selected these boxes. I have to inverse them. Create a new layer. Fill in everything on the outside as white. FX stroke. Set to four again on the inside. Hit OK. And now I have my lines for my boxes. Oh, no. This needs to be set on the outside. Oops. Yeah, this one has to be set on the outside. The bubbles are inside. 
but the boxes are on the outside. So we can have that look. And then I take a brush that, what I like to do, if you noticed, I like to cut off the corners of my boxes. There's no reason for that. I just think it looks cooler. So <laughs> what I like to do is I take a brush that is, that has no pressure by opacity over it and just cut off the corners like that. Hi, sorry I'm late. I was watching a show. No worries, Riley. You missed like almost nothing. We've literally just been making boxes. I should have done this beforehand. It's not that interesting. <laughs> what is up? Hello, Da Plague. Welcome in. Joyce, it sounds like a name from Marble Hornets. I've never watched Marble Hornets. Poor Adobe Illustrator. I've never, I know a few people like Illustrator. I've never really liked Illustrator. Yeah, so I like to cut off the corners of my boxes. What's actually gonna have to happen because this is a bit different. This is gonna have to go over. Yeah, I don't usually do that, but yeah, it has to do it has to happen because there's two panels that have characters over. Actually, you know what? Let's do the unders first before I worry about that. Okay, yeah. So it's a lot of organization. It's a lot of figuring out when I'm going to draw stuff and how I'm going to draw stuff. Um, okay. Okay, that's not too hard. I can do that. Yeah, how did I do this one? It was... It's this entire thing. Oh, did I do it on a separate? Okay. Okay, I get it. All right. It's been a little while. Um, yeah, so this is. So again, I have my own shorthand. These little letters all mean something. So the B, um, that one stands for box, right? So B stands for box. O stands for over. D stands for diagram. Um, so my diagram should actually go underneath the original here. Normally, this box is on the over layer. So over is what goes on top of the boxes. There'll be another folder that's called U. U goes underneath the boxes. So strategically, <laughs> it's a lot of, it's, this is the boring part. This is like why I'm a little bit scared to <laughs> stream my, my process because this is the boring part. It's the logistics of figuring out how all of this is going to work. Yeah, no, this has to be in the same layer. Let's move this back up here. Maybe Jessica could be your alter ego or villain in the comic. I don't like writing villains, um, like very classic villains. I have antagonists, but they don't tend to stay antagonists forever. Villain is definitely definitely a very classic kind of fantasy sort of character trope. Um, and it's something that I don't do very often. You know what? I'm gonna have to change this then. Let's do this way then. Yeah, sorry if this part's kind of boring. <laughs> it's just a lot of me figuring out the logistics of how my panels are gonna work and how everything's gonna fly. Okay, because usually I do this silently in my room and don't worry about other people watching me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that should be the panel layout for now. So now let's move this folder back down and now I can work on the panels. Yay, now I can actually get to lining. Let's go. <laughs> this is the interesting part, is it? I hope so. Grayson has a bowl cut. Great! Yes, he... Okay, so <laughs> Grayson, um, he, if you don't know the story behind him, he started as, like, uh, just a bunch of doodles in class, just or before class, because I was waiting for class to start. Um, 
And one of the things, and I was like, he was originally, his story was originally going to be very, very horror based. Um, like it was originally going to be like pretty edgy. Um, but then as I started to write it more, I started to get back into my, because it was around the spooky season when I started to write it. Um, but then like I got back into my normal writing mindset after a bit. So that it became more of like a, a drama, a drama comedy sort of thing with with like hints of fantasy and horror in there. Um, but then it stopped being so edgy. And Grayson had this haircut because I wanted it to be like an ultra. I was like, what's the most conservative haircut I could think of? And I was like, a bowl cut. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So I gave him that. And I had like the intentions to change it. And I never did. I can't, I shouldn't blur this. No. Sorry. Oh, no, it's all good. Grayson getting beaten up by Jason. To be fair, it would not be hard to beat up Grayson. Gray is only like this 12 year old boy, so he wouldn't really. He he's not he's not a hard opponent. <laughs> he's not anything too special. I love my boy, but he's not like he's it's not an anime. He's not gonna turn into like this. He's not gonna get powers with every new arc. He's just gonna get older, that's all. What's the name of my webcomic? Uh, this is Say Hello Grayson. Um, you can find it on Webtoon. If you Google it, it'll be the first thing that pops up, probably. Your character style reminds me of an artist. Mark Curley. I don't even know who that is. I'm trying to Google them. I can't find them. Uh, oh, Cryley. Oof, that's an ancient manga style. I feel like I, I drew in this style back when I was 14. <laughs> Mastering manga. Yeah, that's, that's a book I'd read when I was like 14. Big manga artist on YouTube, was he? I had no clue. I was never on the art side of YouTube. Okay, I regret it. I had a big book. I had a book when I was younger called The Big Book of How to Draw Manga. Um, looking back, it was not a very good book. <laughs> and like, my mom was like, Jessica, you want to give this to your cousin? And like, you know, me being really pretentious, I was like, uh, no. And I'm like, I'll find him a, I'll find him a book that's good for him. And she's like, no, 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 listen, it doesn't matter. Just give him this one. And I was like, I've never felt so much immense guilt. <laughs> when I bought my brother his first art book, I sat in Indigo for half an hour evaluating all the different art books that were there. till I finally decided on an anatomy one. I think it did him good though. He's really good at anatomy for his age. South Park? I hope it doesn't remind you of South Park. <laughs> no, no offense to those who like South Park. <laughs> I'm drawing while listening to this. I just realized how much the character I'm drawing looks like Grayson. I stare hard from stealing my friend's how to draw book. That's valid. No, that's totally valid. Love really sketchy anime styles like Jujutsu Kaisen manga. Ooh, you know what? You might like that. You might like Bibliomania. That one's pretty scary, though. <laughs> Bibliomania's good. There's another manga that you would that i really really love it's like my favorite manga ever but i can't share it because it's it's horrifically r18 so i can't share it um but it is my favorite manga ever it has like the best art style i've ever seen um hello lennox welcome in still good they have more drawing fundamentals than just manga they sh as they should be it i think it's better if the the book itself is like a drawing fundamentals thing um yeah how to draw manga books are very very hit or miss i think i've only seen one that i think was pretty good um most of the others that i see make me cry um but you know beginners <laughs> whatever works you know um i find that some of them do give you pretty bad habits though that's all 
there was one that I read and it was like, they showed you how to draw the eye in profile. And I was like, sir, that's not correct. <laughs> made, me, made me cry. Hello, long time no see. Welcome in. Jessica would definitely endorse stealing friends' art books, but not Jesse. No, I would not endorse that. I wouldn't endorse stealing your friends' art books. I would endorse, however, asking to borrow them to look through them because art books are phenomenal. I have so many fun art books. I had one. Which one did I get recently? I got one by an artist named um, Devin L. Kurtz. He was a background painter for Disney and Pixar. Um, I believe he worked on video games as well. His, um, the art, it's like the art of the, or Windows to Worlds, if you want to Google that. It's his art book that was on Kickstarter. Absolutely phenomenal. I really need to sit down to read it because it is like gorgeous. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what I did with my sketching. Yeah. For those who are just popping in, I am just drawing pages of my own webtoon. Um, Letting you know as well that I might not, I'll probably not be able to finish this one because most pages take upwards to about three to four hours. Um, that's the majority. Some of them take a little bit longer. Some take a little bit less long. This is a, this is an easier page. So it probably will take about I me mean, normally about three and a half hours, four hours, maybe um, for the completion portion anyway. But that means we will not be able to finish during stream. Um, I'll definitely be working slower because I'm talking at the same time. Um, so I'll finish as much as I can, but definitely will not be able to finish, finish. Um, yeah. I gave one up because it was so bad. Valid. Jujutsu Kaisen starts off pretty energetic, but as it goes on, the world slowly falls apart and the characters suffer. That's most manga. <laughs> That's most anime, manga, kind of fantasy stories. Do uh, you know what? Fantasy stories in general, it usually starts off pretty happy and enjoyable. And as it kind of goes, it starts to spiral. That's, a, that's what they call it. It spirals. Um, that's a very common thing. Uh, hello, writer. Welcome in. Welcome to the stream. Um, I should probably talk about what I said I was going to talk about, which is a uh, comic panel composition. Um... Now, I already sketched out the compositions because <laughs> planning them out on stream was probably not a great idea because it would be, you know, a good maybe half hour of just me back and forth and sketching and me just being completely silent. Because usually when I when I plan out these compositions, I am completely silent and I'm just like sitting there thinking. Um, it's like a song in the background. Um But when you're thinking about uh, comic composition in general, um, you have to think of a bunch of compositions because not only are you thinking of like composition as a whole for the entire page, but you're also thinking about it um, for each individual panel because you're doing a bunch of smaller drawings in one area. Um, so it's pretty close to just normal composition, right? Rule of thirds, all that bunch of jazz. But you also need to worry about where are your boxes get? Where are your bubbles gonna go? How will I convey this action? How do I make it flow from one panel to the other? Right? All that fun jazz. I say that a lot. All that fun jazz. Um, all that stuff. You know, and you need to think about all of that when you are working with it. Um, how do you make it all flow in one smooth moment? You know. Um. In this case, you know, going from page three. Grayson kind of opens the book the heck is in this book, show a page, picture of the book, and then he hears something click behind him. So you see the hand opening the door, Grayson turning around, then the person who opened the door closing the door again, right? So this is him spinning around. You have one panel of that. Man, I gotta go. That's okay. Thanks for coming. Doesn't like Ghibli food. Super true. Jaisik <laughs> thinks anime sucks and hates Kirby. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's definitely opposite me. Oh, the bubbles. Squeezing them in is not a good idea. If it makes you feel any better. Um, I've been drawing comics for my entire life, right? Like, I like that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. I have art from, like, 2006 in my drawer. So, like, I was born in 2001, if you didn't know. Um, so I have drawer, like, art from all the way back then. And there's, like, some old, old comics in there. Um, ooh, hang on. Please have it here. Oh, you know what? I don't have the original on here. Um, but 
there was a really old comic. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can dig it up on Instagram. Because I had a, my mom pulled out one of my really old comics that I did back when I was maybe four, five. <laughs> right? So super, super young. And my mom was like, mom was like, you gotta draw this, redraw this. I was like, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, here it is. So it was like, the original was this. <laughs> right? Just overlapping everything and my mom was like you should read shots so i was like okay oh, don't like your own post so it was a lot of just refiguring out the composition i have no i think this was supposed to be an angel but it kind of looked like a goose so i was like i'm gonna keep it as a goose um oh when did i do this 2019 a couple years ago so yeah i have the composition's not too bad i think i'd change a bit but yeah no it's just i've been doing comics my whole life so speech bubbles weren't always a thing Sometimes what I do is if I didn't have enough room, so say if I had to fit a speech bubble in here, I didn't like overlapping my drawing and I also didn't want to because I did it all traditionally. So my bubble would be like that. <laughs> and it might be another one over here like this. <laughs> so it's like, I would make stuff fit. It's like, it's like, it doesn't fit the composition. No, 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 it will fit in this composition. <laughs> the worst, the absolute worst. I did a lot of fan comics. I loved writing about Kirby. I loved writing about Pokemon. Um... Actually, Pokemon came when I was a little bit older. Pokemon came... I started writing about Pokemon when I was in fifth grade, very heavily. And then I got back out... I got out of it. And then I got back into it when I was in seventh grade. And I drew nothing but Pokemon from, like, late sixth grade to, like, end of eighth grade. <laughs> it was just all Pokemon. Pokemon fan comics and, like, um, fan art and, like, AUs or whatever. I was... Uh, Gosh, the peak of my the peak of my self indulgence. So good. How does it work? Unfortunately, you can't uh, you can't request it. Actually, it's got to be somebody else. How do you motivate yourself for drawing the same thing over and over again? Ah, uh, brain rot. That's not a joke, by the way. That's <laughs> that's literally okay. Um, if you're not on the internet very much, uh, brain rot is just like you growing obsessed with something. Um, and then it being the only thing that you think about for a while. So right now my brain rot is not my own comic. Currently my brain rot is, uh, for my best friend's D and D campaign. Um, watch Star Lost Seas on YouTube, do it. Um, but I have been listening to that for, I listened to that. It broke me apart and put me back together. Actually, it hasn't put me back together again. I'm still in shambles. Um, but I've been drawing that nonstop for the past maybe two weeks now. Um, just doodling into every bit of free time that I have. Um, but usually it's just allowing yourself to, like, maybe this is bad advice, but usually what I do is I kind of let it overtake me a bit. I'm like, every waking second, I'm like, yeah, I'm just thinking about this over and over and over. <laughs> um, so it becomes less clinical, especially when you draw stuff over and over, you have to find a way to make it fun for yourself. And if you find that your ideas just stop becoming fun for you, then you might, it might find, you might find that you just don't want to do it anymore. Right. So I still want to see Grace until its end. I have so much planned for him that I don't want to like stop, you know? So like, he's not the main focus of my brain rot right now, but I definitely don't want to give him up, you know? There we go. Lisa's got it. And Shaleen's got it. <laughs> Goose, the messenger of the gods. So true. My bubble's valid. Double linked up on a Friday night. Let's go, Lisa. Let's go. Um, Hyperfixation, but for non-NDs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my brain rod is focused on uh, a D&D campaign right now. Um, I have never watched a D&D &D campaign prior to this one, so, like, I have not known the, the absolute sheer investment that I would get into. Um, I don't regret it at all. The, the thing with my brain rot is that if it's something external, it suddenly makes my art 20 times better because, like, I suddenly have a want, but, like, in random areas, because I suddenly have a want to improve on specific places um for this one especially i think i got better at eyes and poses for this section of brain rot because it forced me to do a lot of weird um poses and a lot of 
um, funky and character interactions. Also, comic panel composition because I did a little, I did a couple of those just for fun. Um, oh, and my sketching actually, I've been getting better at sketching. My sketches are a lot cleaner. Um, I did these prior to my, I did the sketch prior to my brain rot, so it's a little bit different compared to how I sketch now. Um, but yeah, I've had this sketch sitting around. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, D and D's just hit different. I too have been brain rotting over a homebrew campaign for the past year. So true. I have this. Yeah, I'm <laughs> valid. Um, I want to make fan art for a TV show started two or three pieces, never finish it, even though I want to see it finished. Um, in that case, then sometimes if you just don't end up finishing it, you just don't. A lot of the stuff that I did for like this D and D campaign is just sketches. I haven't even the main thing that I want. I haven't finished. It's like I am working on it, but I work on it. I nibble away at it when I can. I tried to develop a whole new art style after starting D and D. So true. Hello, been listening for a bit. Forgot to say hello. That's all right, Chipster. Welcome in. Um, synopsis for the story. Which story, Marlene? I'm assuming the comic, but just in case I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was never a D and D person beforehand. I was like my, my best friend, super loved D and D, and I was like, yeah, cool, right? I never bothered to get into it that much because I was like, yeah, it's cool, but like I, I'm I'm terrible at improv. I've known that for years, so like I never bothered to like learn to play or anything like that. And, like, none of the, the campaigns that I heard about really interested me too much. Because um, I was never really a classic fantasy type of person. As much as I love it, um, it was never something that I ever got super invested in. Because I've always been more of a realistic fiction kind of person. Um, but this one, this one snagged me. I was, like, I was like, you know what? She's in it. I'm like, I might as well listen to it because she loves it. And it's like, and I was like, all right. Um, I got a lot of work to do and I need something new to listen to while I work. Um, and that brought me down a rabbit hole. And now I'm like, I am sucked. I am, <laughs> I am trapped in this now. Oh, the one you're drawing. Synopsis of this comic panel book. I was late. Yeah, sure. Um, Tis my own. I didn't even give a synopsis for this story. Um, so this is Say Hello Grayson. It's a comic I've been working on. I think it's it's almost... It, no, it has. It's been two years now. Um, oh, I didn't even make a two-year anniversary post. I was so busy with uni. Um, but yeah, I've been working on this one for about two years now. Um, I'm just in the middle of the rewrite currently. Um, it's about this boy, Grayson. He moves to a new... He moves to the town of Maplewell. Um... TLDR, he kind of get he he gets mixed up in a lot of af other afterlife folk. That's what I call them. Um, so he gets possessed by a demon by accident, and then you watch him grow up. I guess that's the, <laughs> that's the best way I can put it without giving too much away. Um, but yeah, he moves to the town, gets possessed by a demon, and then you get to watch him traverse through life with this part about him now. Prophet, yeah. <laughs> There is a summary on the main page, yeah. I can relate to old drawings. I have an old drawing of a comic from a friend. I'm starting to play and I'm redoing all the original five pages digitally. Those drawings were done back in 95 when I was in high school. I was not alive in the 90s. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, I'm quite young. <laughs> um, but yeah. Someday I'll should do a stream where you make designs for randomly rolled D&D characters. I think that'd be neat. I can definitely bring it up. I always find that I have a bias towards elves. Um, I'm not going to elaborate on that. I just... <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, definitely. I can We can gauge some interest on that. The most, of our, most of our viewers are very anime-based. So we've been doing a lot of anime kind of centric things. Anime and video games. I don't know how many people actually are into D D in our communi community. He's twisting, so then this I had it right in the sketch, so it's more like that. Yeah. Do 
Jesse enjoys the knife ears. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I swear. Like, I'll see a carrot. Like, I was actually joking about this with my friend last night. Because I was like, I noticed that as I drew these characters more and more, like, the elves, originally I had their ears just, like, generally pointy. But then as I drew them more and more, the ears got, like, longer and sharper. I was like, yeah, that's about right. That's <laughs> That sounds about right. If you're wondering what I did just there, I drew on the outside of the panel. Um, what that does is it... I'm going to leave that for the background. What that does is it makes sure that the when I uh, magic wand it uh, to put in the flat color, um, it doesn't go outside of the line work. Rip doors! <laughs> there is a gnome character that I've been, that I am, I love in the, the campaign I'm listening to, so... I'm huge on D&D, &D and I have concept art in my game world. Very nice. Yeah, I myself have never played D&D. I'm really, really bad at improv. I love listening to it. I'd love to sit in and listen to somebody play live. Because um, that immersion would be so fun. Um, I myself am very, very bad at improv. Um, so, like, I'm like, I'll just, I'll just sit and listen to y'all. <laughs> Especially because D&D &D is just, like, listening to one big story. It's, like, it, like, it's very easy to get me into some, like, I'm very picky. But usually, like, if you can tell me a good story with good characters, I'll be into it. It's a bit harder when it's visual. Um, easier when it's something read or, or something I can listen to. Um, because then it's, like, I don't have a visual to associate with it. I envision it on my own. So it's the story that fills all that in. And it's very easy to get me into a story. Um... It's very easy to get me to like a story. It's very hard to get me to brain rot over a story. That's what's hard. <laughs> um, but with this one especially, it's like, they they told me a good story and I have been listening to it for weeks on end. So My grandma got me a starter D&D &D set for my 12th birthday. I haven't used it because I find it was super complicated and I hate math. That's why there's like um, websites that do the math for you nowadays. <laughs> I don't think I can read that out loud, but valid. Actually, there is an elf character in this one who's like... <laughs> Actually, I don't think I could say that either, but he's he's great too. <laughs> he's kind of similar to that, but like in a way more chill. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. He's a hippie. He's like a... <laughs> The second he was introduced, I was like, I love this character. <laughs> there, don't, there isn't a character that I don't like as of right now. Like, those are the best stories when there isn't a character that I don't like. Um, like, I'll hate characters for the sake of hating them because, you know, like, they're meant to be hated. But as, like, a writer, as somebody who just enjoys character design in general, um, I still love villains a lot of the time just because, like, you know, Obviously, I'm meant to hate them, but I'll like them in terms of being a character. Um, series where I just hate them flat out, um, they, they feel a little bit more boring to me in terms of the villains. If I can't, if there isn't an area where I'm like, oh yeah, that's well, that's good writing. And if it just makes me angry, then that gets a little bit boring. Um, but usually I like it when the, when I still like the villains a little bit. <laughs> I haven't played in a while because work and my days off aren't don't always align with my friends. That's valid. Oh, did I not? Oh, I didn't. Whoopsies. I didn't fix this area. Yep, yeah, it's just me. It's going to be me lining. I'm going really slow, if you noticed. I'm going a lot slower than normal. Because... I want to make sure that I do this right. Because I'm being careful. I'm being a little more meticulous with how I line. I'm 
mostly using Photoshop, by the way, because it has all my tools, right? It has all the brushes that I normally use. So right now I'm using uh, Kyle's Manga Edge, um, which is like crazy sharp brush. I love my ultra sharp brushes. Um, so I love this brush to death. Um, and then there are specific ones that I use for coloring and for shading and specific effects that look a little bit nicer or a little bit different on here compared to Medibang. Um, certain blending styles and certain effects because Medibang doesn't have effects. So, or not the extent of the effects that I need. <sighs> Villains are so important. They can make or break everything and some people just ignore the fact. Absolutely. And like a lot of the time there's not even a villain. It's an antagonist, right? Which is not the same thing if you didn't know. Um, all villains are antagonists, but not all antagonists are villains, if you're wondering. Um, but yeah, writing, uh, like, because you need to make sure that that intention works, right? And like, if that intention isn't there, then that character is instantly going to be super boring. Um, super boring, super unrelatable, just like, they don't necessarily have to be relatable, but they have to be interesting, right? If you just have a character who's very, very one-dimensional as your antagonist, then it gets very, very boring. So you do need to make sure that, that antagonist has layers. Grayson does have antagonists. Um... They don't get introduced until a little bit later. Actually, no. They, they, some of them do get introduced in the first one. Um, the antagonist is also ever-changing. That's one thing. It's never just one. There's a few. But, yeah. Would you be down in making slash reading a Kirby comic while certain storylines or arts you want there to be more focus on, even if there's just for fun. Um, I used to write nothing but Kirby comics when I was... No, this was, like, before I, like, wrote them as comics. I used to just want to be a flat-out writer. Um, somewhere on my hard drive is a 150-page uh, Kirby fan story. Yes, you heard that right. 150 pages of me writing this Kirby fan story. It took me two years from fourth to sixth grade. So when I was nine to, like, 12, um, I wrote this. Or nine to 11, I wrote this whole thing out. Um, and then I started a second one, and I just never finished it. Um... I was a real edgelord, so a lot of it was just me kind of, it was me taking the Kirby anime and then making it a little bit edgier to kind of fit me at the time. You know, really annoying. <laughs> it was like reading, like sometimes I read it for fun. I'm like, oof, oof, that's not epic, <laughs> right? And like I started it in when I was nine, so there wasn't really proper paragraph structure until halfway through. Like I didn't really hit enter a lot. So it was a lot of just like big, blocks of text and like word art and like oh my god it's the most edgy thing i've ever read um but it was a lot of fun to me back then um that thing taught me how to type too <laughs> because i typed so much it taught me how to type it taught me how to like identify fonts sometimes all that fun jazz so i learned how to type because i wrote an 150 page uh essentially a kirby fanfic when I was 9 to 11. Um, there is a Kirby comic, though. If you didn't know that, there is a Kirby manga. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but there, there's a few out. A few Kirby mangas out. Um, I have actually never read them myself, because I don't think they were ever localized. Um, I do know that there's only one Kirby game where Kirby speaks. I don't remember the name of it. I think Kirby's Avalanche or something. It was a, It's like a Candy Crush-esque kind of game with stacker um but yeah i one day if like i'd be down to write like a kirby comic very um legend of zelda wind waker for coma esque <laughs> if you've never read any of those those are the best they're so like <sighs> the the wind waker for comas are so good um Uh, Mr. Creative, can you make how to draw children's book illustration in Photoshop? Children's book illustration is, um, it's very specific. The thing with children's book illustration is, A, you have to have a style that matches the children's, um, a, ch a children's demographic, which is often, unfortunately, not this anime style. Um, usually it takes a lot more simpler shapes. Lineless is very heavy with children's illustration. Um, a lot of the times it's actually also traditional. They like watercolor a lot. Um, sometimes you work in acrylic. Um, 
but yeah, it is a lot of flat illustration with um, children's work. Like, if you really think about it. Um, yeah, gotta be good at drawing kids. That's a, that's another thing. Children don't want to read about adults. They want to read about kids. Uh, kids and animals. You gotta have a good grasp on how to do those. You gotta be good at simplification. Um, which is actually a lot harder than you might think. Um, if, you're, if you're a big fan of details and accuracy, you gotta learn how to simplify all that down. That's why I don't think I could ever be a straight children's illustrator. Um... But yeah, it, children's illustration is very, it's very different. It's a little bit, it's hard to get the hang of. You gotta have the right mindset. Hundred fifty pages, yeah. It's a few thousand words. Are you gonna share that fanfiction? Absolutely not. I will never, that thing is never gonna reach the light of day. I will talk about it. I will share what is in it, but I will never actually let you read it. <laughs> it was a word document. So it, I could destroy it in any second that I want. You know, it's not on the internet anywhere. So I could destroy it with a, without a second thought. We need to convert it to my immortal. Oh, gosh, I've met, I've met. I can't believe I've met somebody else who liked my immortal. To be fair, it wasn't that edgy. Nobody was go gothic in that one. Um... To be fair, like, also this one wasn't, it wasn't a romantic fanfiction. It was very much like, I love drama, now and then, right? So it was very much like a very dramatic fiction. Where a lot of it was like, <laughs> broken family relationships and, <laughs> that was actually a big one. It was a broken family dynamic in there. Um, there was... Oh gosh, I'm trying to think. There was not not a lot of serious topics. There was like a lot of saving the world. There was like morality, like about doing the right thing versus doing what you want to do. That sort of jam. Um, make the make a text window. WT stands for written text. This is an over file. Oh, let's get rid of that. Yeah, this one's over, so I won't deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, very infamous Harry Potter fanfic. That, that, Harry Potter puts it loosely. <laughs> um, I remember reading that back when I was in, like, ninth grade. Because somebody had brought it up. And I was like, okay, everybody keeps talking about this. I might as well read it. I spent an hour reading it. I've never laughed so hard. Um, it's a good one. It's a good one. I, bet it, I think I know which one it is. Kirby Telenova, help! Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Now that I think about it, you know. Oh, yeah. Because it was like... I had like a headcan because that that's for this is a pretty popular headcan by the way. Um, I had like a headcanon that like Meta Knight was Kirby's dad because it was like a whole thing, you know, like because underneath the mask, Meta Knight looks exactly like Kirby. Whenever you defeat him in any game, Meta Knight, uh, he does just have a Kirby face. He's just like a purple Kirby. Um, so I was like, yo, they look the same. They must be related. A lot of that was a perfect popular headcanon back then. Um, I don't I don't know if it's still a thing. I'm not actually part of like the Kirby fandom. I just really like Kirby. Um, so I don't really know what goes on in that corner of the world. Um, though I know that Kirby fans are generally pleasant. Um, but yeah, so I don't actually know what goes on in that corner. Um, but okay, what is what is happening here? Did I merge these two? It's been a while since I've drawn the sketch, so I'm trying to like figure out what I drew here. Okay, I think I get it. Um, <laughs> I think two things that go better together than Kirby, <laughs> Kirby and fa broken family dynamics. So sure. Uh, give them many middle names to work properly. Valid. I've never actually watched a telenovela. I don't know. I am not. Um, of Spanish heritage, so I've never had anybody who 
watch them. Well, my grandma's Spanish Filipino, but regardless, she doesn't live with us right now, so. And she never watched, like, telenovelas or anything. She watched uh, Judge Judy a lot. So that was what I watched a lot when I was growing up. <laughs> Judge Judy and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You know, the very grandma-esque things to watch. <laughs> Kirby, Rogelio Santa Cruz de la Rosa. Could you? <laughs> Need a Stella in there somewhere. Not into Kirby at all, so I don't know much about it. For a time, I thought Kirby and Ben and I were related. That's very common. But yeah, that was a that was a big headcanon of mine. And then, like, I created, like, like Kirby had, like, siblings. And it was, like, it was this huge broken dynamic. Because, like, the there was an accident that happened. And the brother accidentally killed the sister. It was so, like... <laughs> like thinking about it now I'm like whoa there was so much that I wrote logistically it made no sense like zero sense um I tried to make it work so bad it was really funny um now I'm thinking back on it I'm like sheesh but you know <laughs> just Judy oh yeah oh yeah am I drawing these nails correctly I didn't originally have them sharp did I hang on I need to check did I draw them as sharp in the prologue? Let's check this real quick. I didn't. Okay. Then I need to fix that. All right. Hang on. Let's see. Because I need to keep that consistency. Those hands are cut off here. Okay. So they weren't. They're not sharp. My bad. Yeah. It's only Ghoul Rathel's nails that are sharp. Right. Right. So let's fix that then. Despite these guys being main characters, I haven't actually, I don't actually draw them that often. <laughs> Outside of the comic, they're not my favorites to draw. The demon priest and his wife. They're not really my favorites to draw in general. Just cut off their stiletto nails. Now they're coffins. <laughs> that too. I can't relate to any of these. I don't know who any of these characters are. Kirby are from previous stream creeping in. They're gonna have to be more specific, buddy. I, <laughs> I drew a lot of that. Top to Mary Sue and Jessica. I actually read some Mary Sue's that were written really well. I hope to reach that level where I can write a Mary Sue well. Gosh. <laughs> the cursed Kirby's creeping now. Oh, the 30 Kirby's that I drew? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you guys got me remembering what I wrote. There's so much. There's so much. Like, it's the most, like, it's super, I never even, I didn't even watch anime back then. It's super anime. It's so, like, oh my god. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, you know what? No, I guess I did watch anime. I guess it counts. Because I watched a lot of Bakugan. Not Pokemon, Bakugan. Which is, like, it had the same energy as Yu-Gi-Oh! But wasn't as famous, I guess. Well written, Mary Sue. I'm thinking One Punch Man. One Punch Man isn't to Mary Sue because not because a lot of people don't like him. With Mary Sue's, people have to like you a lot. There's a there's a web comic that I read. The beginning after the end. The main character is absolutely a Mary Sue. That I'm rooting for him every single time. He's such a good character. I might have missed that part. When you do the layout on panels, do you do the action first or the background? Um, I do the action first. Um, a lot of the times because if I focus on the background too much, um, especially because it's digital, I have the option to do the main focus first before the background because I can just put them on different layers. Um, if I was to do the background first, then I would focus too hard on the background and it might become too busy compared to the main action. You always want your main action to be the thing that has the most focus. Um, oh. What? How did I draw this hand? Oh, no, I accidentally... Okay, I get it. Um, but yeah, it's always better to do the action first, just because then you have a way to put in your characters and you can work your background on after... You can work in your background afterwards. Um, 
you should always work on the main focus first um, whenever I work on um, whenever I work in comics, I try to work on the main focus first. If the main focus is a an establishing shot, um, we talk about these. We talked about these in a previous stream. Um, the establishing shot is like an area shot, so it kind of shows off where you are, um, what setting you're in, stuff stuff like that. Um, then I would start with the background because you know um, that's going to be your main focus. It's what you want people to focus on. But if you have a character in there. Um, and that's what you're supposed to be focusing on, then you focus on the character first. Because that's the that's going to be the heightened importance. So it basically is just whatever the main source of importance is, that's what you want to focus on. Bakugan, the original one, had the sickest plot twist ever. Oh, I only watched the original Bakugan. I don't even know what the new one's about, and I don't care. Listen, Daniel Kuso. Is that the original dude, though? With, like, the other guys. Like, some of them had the most, like, English names. And there were, like, some who did not have English names at all. It was so whack. It was so, like, it was good, bad, you know? Daniel Kuso. If you think about it, because Kuso translates to, like, dang, or, like, damn it. So, really, his name is Damn Daniel. I think that's really funny. I hate that meme so much, but I think it's funny. <laughs> Love the beginning after the end. Arthur's cool, yes. Arthur's absolutely like written kind of like a Mary Sue because like he caught he has like this harem and like he's like super powerful for his age and like knows everything and is super good in battle and like he gains the favor of people really easily, but man, he's a good character. <laughs> he's written in a way where it doesn't feel obnoxious, which is nice. Like a character like that, I would normally find very obnoxious, but he's written in a way where he's not, which is like, that's hard to do. So like, I applaud the writer. Writers. All I remember is Dan and Shun. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Dan and Shun. <laughs> there was also Masquerade. Who's just a dude with a mask, and it was so he kind of looked like Yugi. What is this panel? What did I do? I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. Okay. Whoops. I drew this so long ago. I'm struggling. Hello, Louis. Welcome in. I always struggle with that. I couldn't find info on it. Thanks a lot. No worries. Really, it is all up to you, uh, Chipster. Like, whatever you want to start with, whatever you want to end with. Because um, the thing is, you probably couldn't find a lot on it because everybody has a different way of working. Um, everybody has different creative processes. It's really all about figuring out what yours is going to be. Because um, there is no right or wrong way, right? It's the same with, like, writing a webtoon or writing a webcomic, right? I The only reason I have as many like subscribers as I do is like pure luck you'll always see people like oh it's like I I have these thousands of subscribers and here's how you do it it's not a it's not like a it's not a <laughs> it's not like a, it's not a formula like you you can do certain things you can advertise you can do all that fun jazz I did not, I've never watched one of those videos before it was pure chance it's pure chance and then, like, if your goal is just to get popular, then maybe you shouldn't be making one. <laughs> you should have some heart behind it, is what my advice is. I think I already did that. I think I already overlined. Yeah, I did. That's okay. Have you heard of the anime source graphic novels of Death Do Us Part? I think I have. Hang on. Until death do us part. Yeah, I've seen this anime before. I don't think I ever, or this manga before. I don't think I ever bothered. It didn't seem like something I'd be into. Hiroshi Takashige. What else have you done? Yeah, 
I don't know. It just never seemed like something I'd be into. So I was like, I never bothered. But yeah. Vampire the Masquerade is a great game. I have never heard of that one. Let's Google that too. <laughs> oh, this is... This is like an older game. I thought this was like newer. Based on like the name. <laughs> oh yeah, this definitely seems like something I wouldn't be into. Um, If you like it, sure. Cool. This doesn't seem like something I'd be really into. With the, like, with the vampire versus werewolves fight, I've always been on the side of werewolves. I think I find them a little bit more fun compared to vampires. I know the history behind both as well. Oh, I should use a different brush. I was using a textured, I think, before. Right? What did I use? What did I use for here? Don't mind this. Um, hang on. No, not this. It's fine when we're complete the transformation. Yes. What did I use? What brush is this? Oh, this is still my... Okay. This is still the... The Mungle Edge? Alright. I guess I should just turn off my smoothing then. Uh, Reddit once he's good at that time is Blonde Pirate from Sword of Night. Yeah, I, if, listen, if you like it, go for Listen, don't let me, my predetermined opinions... <laughs> Rain on your party. If you love it, great. That's fantastic. I'm glad that you have something that you like. Um, interesting, interesting. Again, I'm very picky if it's visual, so it's easier to get me into a story if I can't see it. <laughs> Vampire of the Masquerade was ahead of his time. Sure, if you if you like it, yeah. I again, I've I'd never heard of it. I think it looks all right. It just doesn't seem like the the type of genre I'd be really into. Vampires win versus well ropes because they can utilize the chew tie. I don't know. I've just always found like if there's very few vampire tropes that I've been very into. Horrible's a rod. I always love the drama of having to fight the monster, but the monster's still someone you know inside. Yeah, exactly. Also, I just, I've always found that I really like werewolf designs. Um, a lot of the times they utilize a lot of body horror. I think that's really cool. Um, especially the more gnarly ones tend to use a lot of body horror. It's like, there's always the, there's the scale. There's the really cute werewolves, and then there's the really gnarly werewolves. And I, I tend to really like both. Um, some people like to, to kind of, break through like bone structure or whatever to design werewolves and i think that's really really sick um i think the only vampire design i've really liked was never really used anywhere but it was just somebody designing her fun and it was like this oh gosh i barely remember it was like um it was like the teeth weren't exactly it was like a it was like a mech it wasn't exactly like a an organic vampire it was like as if it was a science experiment i really liked that one a lot i thought that was really cool but I've never really seen anything else that was as fun as those ones. Okay. Whoops. Oh, continue. Is it still closed? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I should probably talk more about this comic. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... What? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Boo. All right. I guess I do have to just fill this in real quick. So, yep, all I'm doing right now is I'm just going to fill in some color. So selected everything, select, modify, expand by two, inverse that selection, and then just create a flat color layer. So this is me, whoops, I have to inverse this too. This is me just prepping for colors when I actually get to them. Oh, I forgot to erase this portion. Whoopsies, let's just fix that. At the moment, I'm writing two different stories, which I won't be making the art for one. Not sure of the second one. Ah, funky, funky. 
I always have like my main like thing for Grayson, which is obviously what I put the most energy into, but then I always have side things too. I gotta check what this is real quick. Guilty Gear kind of has a mech-based vampire, does it? I've never played Guilty Gear. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> so this is the main image. And then I have some background lines as well. So let's put those in there. This is the time we'll use where, like, I say, like, okay, I don't really use that many lines. Or I don't use that many layers. Comics are the one time you'll see me use this many layers. Because I have to organize everything in order for it to work. Vampire kids in South Park, just regular kids, bought all their clothes and hot topics, best representation of representation of vampires. That honestly just sounds like I'm trying to think how to explain this. That sounds like a high schooler trope from like the 90s. <laughs> Yeah, and then I don't have to completely color this in because oh, this line is placed not great because it creates a tangent down there. It comes too close, it creates a tangent there. If I go too far, it feels unnatural. Oh, I don't win. I never win. All right, let's see. Because it's like, ah, oh, all right, that's about as good as I'm getting. Sure. Probably need this here as well. I agree per se. How do you figure angles? Like how do you choose what camera angles goes for each shot, shot slash, slash section? Um, I think of narrative. So depending on the area that I'm going with, um, Knowing what shot, quote unquote, to do is also a knowledge of camera angles and videography and cinematography. Um, my dad's a photographer, so I've kind of grown up with this my whole life. Um, one thing in particular, especially, um, so there's a lot of terms, a lot of terms. You can find them in what's, uh, I think we have a comp comic composition video out already. We definitely did a live stream on it where I actually talked about all the different shot types. Um, because each shot type is used for different situations. They have things for them. So if, for example, um, lovely mods, if you can find that video, it's something about comic composition. Um, but there's a, like the, the establishing shot, for instance, is generally used in the beginning of near and the beginning of scenes, right? I think of them as like scripts. So if we have like the beginning of a scene, Right, we usually start with an establishing, should be so we know what time of day it is, where they are, where the character is heading out, so on and so forth. Conversations usually have a lot of medium shots, um, depending on how severe it is or how serious it is. There might be some, um, there might be some close-ups as well. Long shots are usually used if they're moving. All that fun jazz. All right, now I gotta move this folder above here so I can work in the O folder. Oops. So this is my image file now. This is going to be my thin line. Uh, how high is Nagoroyuki on the tier list though? Sticking my soul. I have no clue who that is. Oh, from Guilty Gear. I've never played Guilty Gear. I, <laughs> I love this design, though. This is really cool. There's this one character. I don't know her name or their name, but they have paw prints on the bottom of their boots, and I really love that. There's one character who also turns their hair into a sword. I think that's pretty sick. I think it's the same game. It probably isn't. Maybe. <laughs> the art style looks similar. 
Maybe it's by the same studio. I don't know. Um, this character design is really cool. I like that, though. Why are tensions bad? Like, I know they're bad because you explained it a bit. Um, tangents, usually what they do is they create an unwarranted tension. Um, the thing with tangents is that it, it creates a very unnatural look to the entire piece. So if you have two things that are really, really close to each other, it creates this, like, it creates this unnatural, it's, it's the best way I can describe it. It creates this unnatural look. So, like, if you have, like, a, it messes with perspective. That's the main thing. Um, it messes with perspective because if they're too close together, then it can end up making it look a little bit um, raw and wrong. Um, for instance, if you have like a tree, right? And if you have a car that tangents directly with the side of the tree, it looks like it's hitting the tree. A, B, it has too much tension. It feels unnatural and wrong. Um, so usually you'd want the tree to either be completely away from it or being overlapped entirely. Um, that portion is up to you as the artist. Um, but tangents usually just create uh, an awkward space in your composition. That tends to be the main thing. Um, sometimes it's purposeful. It depends on what you're illustrating. I've done some purposeful tangents before. Um, not necessarily for comics, but for like more artsy pieces or whatever. Because I go to a pretentious school when I have to do that. Um, but, you know. Um, but for more literal kind of commercial art like this, I, I do have to avoid them as much as possible. Bayonetta does a lot more with her hair than just a sword. Mark my words, I'm playing Bayonetta, Bayonetta 3. Excited for that one. The queen has returned. What's my favorite mythical animal? Also, hello, RK Cubes. Ooh, that's a tough one. When I was younger, I really loved griffins. I've always loved dragons, though. I've always been a really big fan of dragons. I've lo I love. I've always loved the classic European. Big fan of wyverns, or waverns. I think I just like dragons. I just like dragons in general. When I was younger, I had the nickname the Dragon Lady just because I drew dragons all the time or just the Dragon Girl. Because dragons were like my favorite thing ever. I still love dragons, obviously. I just don't draw them as often. Um, but you might see them a lot in, in, in influencing a lot of the creature designs that I do. <laughs> Especially like if you've read Grayson on Instagram before, then like, you know. Because Grayson's finished up to chapter one on Instagram. On Webtoon, it's the rewrite. So the original one on, on Instagram is not up to date, but it definitely has like other characters in there um, that have not been redesigned at all. Owl cats. <laughs> Paw Boots is Giovanna. Hair Weapons is Milia. Thank you. Gear, Guilty Gear has all kinds of rad character designs, awesome music, meat for her concept. You don't necessarily need to play to enjoy Guilty Gear, as a lot of people say with other video games. Um, yeah, maybe one day I'll get into it. <laughs> There's nothing driving me to it. Like, I don't really have any friends who play it. I don't really see a lot of people around me who are into it, so. I've never really had the drive to do it one day, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. One thing at a time. I can only handle one thing at a time. So right now that slot is uh, very heavily taken. So. <laughs> Gotta go. Good day, night, evening to wherever y'all are. And thanks to you, Jesse. Thank you, Lennox. Welcome. Or sorry, thank you for joining. Before I forget. I know it doesn't fit in the stream, but I'll ask. Go for it. What does what does rendering mean? I hear this term a lot by artists. Never know what it means. So rendering is literally just how you finish a piece. Rendering doesn't necessarily mean that you're painting. Um, uh, that's what they tend to say a lot. Is like uh, I'm rendering this piece, so it's usually like I'm I'm finishing it or I'm like painting it. Um, rendering doesn't necessarily mean that you're painting the art piece. It's literally just meaning that you're finishing it um, in whichever way that you've decided to finish it. Um, so once, so this piece is, this page is completely rendered, right? There's the shading in there. There's the, um, the blushing is added. There's the hue shifts. There's all that fun jazz, right? Um, there's the multiply layers, all that. Um, so this page is rendered. It's rendered. It's finished. This page is not finished, right? So rendering it is just the way that you complete a piece. 
Love me a good Leviathan or sea monster. I love sea monsters. I love anything that goes that's creepy in the ocean. Real or not. I just like creepy ocean things. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like looking at deep sea stuff. I, I love deep sea stuff. I am I am horrifically afraid of going underwater, but I love like like I don't like swimming. But I love sea creatures and I love the things that are under the water. So it's not it's not the creatures that um scare me about going underwater. If anything, they convince me to go underwater more. It's literally just the fact that I don't like going underwater. <laughs> How did I draw this hand? This hand's actually pretty sick. I don't know what I did though. Cerberus is really cool. Greek mythology, very nice. 6 a.m. here, so I gotta go. Goodbye. Goodbye, Plague. Thanks for joining. Thanks, no worries. Um, but yeah, how you render something, up to you. Each artist is different. You'll notice me zooming in and out a lot. And that's really just me checking to make sure that stuff looks like I'm going to have to change that up a actually. That's too concentrated. It is a lot of back and forth. It's me making sure that the composition looks good zoomed out as well. <clears throat> so this is me going outside the panel. When you're working on comics, don't think you have to stay inside the panel. <laughs> I love to go outside the panel. I love to change how it looks, right? Um, sometimes the panel doesn't have any bounding lines at all, right? Be experimental with it. Just because it's a comic and it needs panels doesn't mean that there has to be a panel for every single thing. My establishing shot did not have a panel. Yeah, that's already over that, so that's fine. Pages one till three are going to be released this Monday, which is why I haven't pulled them up. Um, this is page four, so you're getting a bit of spoilers regardless. Um, but, you know. I find it weird to put dragons in the monster category just because I find them too majestic. I don't know why. No, that's valid. Um... Dragons are just considered monsters because they were in that category historically. You know, generally they're a very classic fantasy antagonist, so often you see that. But within more modern terms, dragons are often used as, like, majestic companions or whatever. So that's the thing with a lot of, like, monsters and fantasy creatures, is, like, they started off as, oh gosh, I should fear them, and now it's like, yeah, they're cool. <laughs> like the root of a lot of monsters very classic spooky monsters like Frankens like frankenstein's monster vampires all that fun jazz is anti-semitism i did learn this in class um but they're not that anymore it's like you know human like our culture has taken that and like changed it completely which I think is it's good in a lot of ways right now. It's just like, ooh, it's a fantasy monster. It's cool. They're cool and they're kind of spooky and they're used more for entertainment than anything than pro compared to propaganda, which is nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Big ugly unicorns can be monsters. Depends on what uh what if you're a which kind of unicorn are we talking like Lisa Frank unicorn or Spider Rick Chronicles unicorn? Because this <laughs> is a bunch of unicorns. If you've never seen a good fantasy monster, if you've never seen any of the fantasy monsters from the Spider Rick Chronicles, please look them up. I've like, I've never actually read the Spider Rick Chronicles. I think I've watched the movie when I was younger, but I don't really remember it. Um, but I have the art book, which is really funny. And that thing inspired so much of like my early fantasy work because I love those creature designs so much. I feel like part of part of my love of creature design came from the designs from the Spiderwick Chronicles just because of the way that they handle all these really classic fantasy creatures. I've never been able to look at them in any other light. Uh, one that I really really loved when I was younger was the was the Kelpie, um, and I'm never able to. There was another time that I 
oops. Every other time that I watch somebody else illustrate a Kelpie, I compare it to that illustration. Because I just, I, I don't think there's anything better. It's like it's such a good, oops, such a good illustration overall. I'm t far too lazy to redraw his halo over and over, by the way. So I just created a stamp brush for it. <coughs> Work smarter, not harder. You know? <laughs> that means I need to fix this turn later, too. Oh, well. Yeah, I think I'm only going to be able to get to the, the lines for this one, y'all. It's 520 already. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah. You got the movie for Spider Rick, Arthur Spider Rick. Yeah. It's an amazing movie. I barely remember it. I love horses. I'm a huge fan of horses. I think I just like animals in general. I think the only animal that I find pretty ugly is a monkey. I know that a lot of people when I was younger loved monkeys. There was a huge monkey obsession when I was a kid. Um, I've always found them really ugly. I've never found a monkey very cute. Sorry. I just, <laughs> there's something very uncanny about them that I don't like. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I find the best monsters are those that don't look intimidating at first look but you later find out they could be terrifying of course this isn't the traditional monster definition the thing with the traditional monster that the definition of monster is so ambiguous it's like it doesn't matter anymore what it did mean it's more so like how you create it you know a monster is just like a non-humanoid a non-human antagonist in a way you know So whatever you choose to have monster mean to you, that's like up to you, dude. Looks up spider rick creatures, they're neat little friends, yeah. I love the hobgoblins, I think those guys are really cool. Ah, hello! Welcome in, you soil? Or pan, I'm whichever one. <laughs> Glad you can make it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna be legit. Like, I don't... <laughs> Whatever you decide that monster means to you, that's up to you, you know? Like... I love monsters. I've always loved monsters. Um, Actually, no, that's not true. When I was younger, I was definitely scared of monsters. But now that I'm older, I have such an appreciation for monster design. And it's like, the Spider Rick Chronicles has done such good things for creature design. It's like, such classic fantasy design. It's beautiful. Yee! Chase J Jessica is an unhuman antagonist. So true. So true. <laughs> yeah, I've always loved the spider rip Kelpie. Um, oh, they had this one giant sea monster that was so cool. And like, I don't remember the name of it, but I remember seeing that and I was like, yo. I think it was like, what was the book that I have? It's the spider Rick Chronicles Creature Compendium, something like that. I think it is a creature compendium, but I don't think it's actually called that. My family had quite the journey with spider Rick Chronicles. Yeah, I never actually read them. Um, what did I read as a kid? I really loved... Oh my gosh. Um, Wings of Fire. That's a dragony one. Uh, I loved... Narnia as a kid. I read a little bit of Lord of the Rings. I loved um Oh my god. I love <sighs> I'm trying to think. Um Percy Jackson I read when I was younger. I still read Percy Jackson. I read the new ones, Trials of Apollo. Um I read a little bit of the Kane Chronicles, but never finished them. Just anything by Rick Riordan, I read a lot of. One huge, 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 huge comic inspiration that I had when I was a kid was Bone. Um, I really love Bone. I, I really love Di uh, not Dark One Kid. I actually didn't like that series. I really loved. Um, ironically, I really loved Captain Underpants. I read a lot of Daft Pilkey, and like growing up now, like looking at Daft Pilkey's message where he's like, art should be something that everybody can enjoy, no matter your skill set or like just who you are, right? Art is something that's meant to bring joy to people and, like, you can't bring somebody down for that. That's, I love Dev Pilkey. He's such a great influence for art. Um, 
and like young artists and writers. Because he finds it really sad when people are scared to write or draw because they're scared that they're, they won't be good, you know? It's like, it's, you should have fun with it. That's the first and foremost thing. And like, I agree with that so heavily. I'm like, yeah, dude, just do what you want. <laughs> you know? Like, obviously there are rules and stuff that you should take care of and whatever. But like, at the end of the day, you should be having fun. PJO rules. Super true. Watching movies and printed it on our minds, but didn't know the name of it. Spent years trying to find it valid. The Kane Chronicles? Yeah, the Kane Chronicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Convinced that Greg is a sociopath. <laughs> so true. I never, I never liked Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I think the one that I read, the equivalent that I read when I was younger was a Dork Diaries. That's like the quote unquote, the girl version. Um, the thing with Dork Diaries though, is that her problems aren't her own fault, right? You can't blame somebody because they're getting bullied. That's not their, like, she just showed up and like, they decided to target her. That's not her fault. That's the what was the main antagonist? What was the antagonist name? Mackenzie? Something like that? I don't remember. Um, Greg Heffley's problems were because he refused to see his own hubris. That was, my, that was my philosophy. I was like, listen, everything Greg Heffley does is his own fault. Okay? That's his own fault. Sorry. So, like, every time I read, like, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I was like, you're so annoying. I would hate you in real life. <laughs> Am I going to watch the live action Percy Jackson series? No, I'm too scared. I know that Uncle Rick is working with this one directly, but I am, I never like live action versions. So like, I'm, I'm too scared to watch it. Nothing we love more than pointillism. I despise pointillism. I love the look of it, but I could never do it myself. <laughs> <clears throat> so cool. Thank you, Riley. The name of the wind is good. I've never heard of that one. The name of the wind. Yeah, my favorite, all-time favorite comic series when I was younger was Bone. I cannot remember the author's name for the life of me. Um, but I read Bone like crazy. I still have all eight books. I have the, like, the spinoff. That was three, like, chapter books. I have the one comic spinoff. I have the the character guide with the quiche recipe in there. <laughs> I brought this out loss of mine how bad it was Greg is the problem he so is like he really is the problem Greg is his own issue my brother saw it and lost his mind how bad it was like the live action show or the live action movies because the live action Percy Jackson movies we've established how terrible those are look looking back on it I'm like oi 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 I am just incredibly excited for the spin-off series, like the spin-off Percy Jackson series that focuses on Nico, Nico and Will. I am extremely excited for that. Nico has always been my favorite character. So I was just like, it's like, there's going to be a spin-off with Nico and Will. And I'm like, sir, truly? Hmm. You have piqued my attention, good sir. Everybody's scared. Those PJ movies suck. It's super true. Super true. The movie? Okay, yeah. Well, the movies suck. Um, the We don't know about the show because the show is being... The show is being uh, directed or, like, helmed by the writers. So he's being it's being helmed by Rick Riordan. So we don't actually know what it's like. Um, most likely better than the movies because it's going to be a TV series instead. Um, but it's also Disney, and I don't 100% trust Disney, so I am still somewhat afraid. My brother and dad were like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad if you've never read the books. If you've read the books, then they're terrible, but if you haven't read the books, then they're just like, they're very okay movies. It's kind of the same with Divergent. Except now that I've gotten older, I realized that the book for Divergent was very subpar as well. That movie sucks, though. That <laughs> I remember like not liking it that much when I was younger, but I still liked it because I was part of the fandom or whatever. You know, that Tumblr book girl fandom. But like, that hair should be fluffier. 
happened here? Not enough flu for my boy. <laughs> yeah, we have about a half hour left. I'm sorry I went really slow for this one. This is the pace that I work at when working on a comic. Um... Because really, it is, it's a very meticulous process. The thing with working on webtoons and or webcomics is that it's very, very meticulous. Because you have to focus on a bunch of different compositions at once. You have to focus on making sure that each panel is just as good as the others. Obviously, the shortcuts you can take. Um, unfortunately, the panels that I have don't have any of those shortcuts. So I do have to work with what I have. Um... I actually might reline some of this because I wasn't at full focus. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm like some of the lines I'd like I can do better. It's like you think I'm harsh with my work normally. I'm even harsher with my work when I'm working on comic pages. It's like I am an intensely harsh critic of myself. That's how I work with my comic work. Will Mr. Mosquito Man make a cameo in this comic? If other demons ever show up, then possibly. <laughs> so I'm dyslexic. All good. Yeah. That's true, Marlene. Didney can be, yeah, watching all those Did Didney plus Marvel shows. At least I'm relieved about their CGI VFX. Yeah, it's not the CGI that I'm worried about. It's Didney themselves. <laughs> It did me themselves a little bit uh, iffy to me, but that's a that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> oh my god! Come on. Still laughing at the barf emoji. Valid. Yeah, right, so each panel, right, I want to make sure that it helps lead the eyes around the entire composition, right? Especially with the speech bubbles, the first thing that our eyes are going to see are the, obviously, like, when, when I write, I write from left to right, right? So we start off with this one, it kind of goes in a descending order from here. This guy pops up, but the first thing you'll probably read is the speech bubble because it's text. Our eyes automatically go to text, so that means that based on how this is being followed, you'll kind of go in this direction to follow the shape of the text, right? With the actual illustrations, the body shape, you have the body shape here. It's like you kind of start up at the head, you notice the hand down here, flow of this body, you'd have this hand flowing into Grayson himself. Um, and then I kind of let the text do the rest of the work. It's a lot of like thinking of the relationship between each illustration that you draw. It's a lot of work, <laughs> and that's usually why I don't stream it. <laughs> it's like not streaming the <clears throat> the sketching portion. One thing you'll learn about me is I really don't like writing in front of people. It's one thing that I've always hated. I literally don't know why. Like I I can draw in front. I've always been able to draw in front of people. I've always been able to like talk about a lot of things in front of people. I I have a very small filter. Um, I have a bigger filter because this is uh, my job, but um, if just in like normal circles, like I have a much smaller filter when it comes to certain topics, but like it, when it comes to writing, I just don't, I don't like writing in front of people. I've never been able to do it. <laughs> it's just always something that I stay away from. Gotta go. Bye. Thanks for joining RK Cubes. Wish Netflix could have taken PGO to the way it did the Kane Chronicles. Did it take the Kane Chronicles? I didn't even know that. Netflix always a hit or miss for me too. 
I certainly like a lot more Netflix shows, but Netflix shows are either like really good or really awful. There's no in between. That's off. Why is this eraser so tiny? He's a very flat figure, so sometimes it's kind of hard to draw his body in certain perspectives. I need to actually check this. How does this look? That's actually not bad. Okay. <laughs> My brother and sister were watching me draw this and I was like, do you mind? I love crowds. I love audiences. I'm usually like, if you're watching me draw, I love being in an audience. I love having an audience. There was a... I trained myself to really like having an audience. First of all, I was always encouraged. So it was always like, yeah, my family likes to watch me draw. It's just a thing. Um, back in elementary school, there would always be people that watched me draw. Um, my friends, I always like to show my drawings to people. There would always be people watching me draw in regard regardless. Uh, I remember, because I, I was the only digital artist in my, in my school. Um, and I didn't like going outside for recess. I wanted to stay in. So a lot of the times what I would do is I would just bring my laptop to the library and there'd be people like, oh, Jess is in, let's watch her draw. So I'd just be sitting on a couch and I'd have, a, I'd have like a crowd of people around me. <laughs> it'd be like, there'd be like a good like three or four little kids and some of my friends in there hanging out with me. Sometimes a teacher would walk by and ask me how I'm doing. Um, but I'd always have this little posse that just liked to sit down and watch me draw. And that like kind of trained me to get used to audiences and crowds and like performing as well as like I used to be a pretty heavy music student. So I was used to performances anyway. Um, like I was used to getting up on stage and singing or talking. I liked public speaking. So it was like I was totally fine with that, too. Um, double checking, making sure there's not too many spaces that need to be fixed. Yes, yes. OK, that works. There we go. See, now we have some stuff overlapping. All right, so we have that nice overlapping effect. Some panels are hidden behind, some panels are not. I can turn off the sketch layer. So now I've got everything lined and the color, flat colors kind of prepped. The coloring portion is the portion that takes the least amount of time. Um, the flat coloring portion, anyway. The actual shading portion takes a bit more time. Um, backgrounds, especially on Grace's pages, take a while. Just because it's me figuring out a lot of stuff. Um, for this one especially, it might take a bit. Uh, sorry, I'm seeing how bad. <laughs> At least Netflix ain't Disney. True. I mean, a corporation's a corporation, but Disney has done more. Um... Ah, yes. Thank you, Shaleen. Um, this is the page for my web, my web comic. It's on Webtoon, but it's not a traditional Webtoon, so. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the writing sometimes, how they well they translate screen to screen. Super true. So the camera's angles have to work with the text bubbles, too. Yes, so you do have to think about how your speech bubbles will move, right? If we're thinking about general composition, um... Not only now are we thinking about illustration, where it's just the drawings that are in there, but we're also thinking about how the speech bubbles are going to fit in there. You can't just plop them in there. They have to work well with the composition that they're in, right? Because if you just kind of plop them in there, it won't work. It's definitely easier if there is no speech bubbles in a page, right? Because not every page has a set of bubbles, right? But if there is... Right? I think this, I think this set is fine. All right. If it's not, then I'll just close it really quick. Um, yeah, so like not only are we working with the the drawings now, like obviously we have those too, but we have to make sure that the speech bubbles can fit in 
and that they kind of match the composition. Sometimes you just kind of got to fudge it and it works. You know, this one's just top, comes down, you go back to here, top down. Then also this action. I always find it tough to really draw, to draw Gorath out re-entering Grayson. <laughs> that part's always, it's really hard to do, to make it look natural enough. Um... Yeah, final moments I really usually like to have is full long shots. It's not quite establishing, but long shots for sure. Again, sometimes you just don't have backgrounds. Sometimes it's just the black. Sometimes there's no bounding boxes. No, having no um, bounding box, by the way, gives it, it permeates a feeling. I always find it has like a feeling that makes it feel up in the air almost, right? So like a feeling of emptiness, a, se a second of shock. Um, maybe just like a moment of peace, um, or maybe just like a really cute kind of interaction. Having no bounding box helps permeate uh, an emotion. Again, play with it. Play with your compositions. Make sure that they don't all look exactly the same. Um, if Grayson played a sport, what would it be and why would it be curling? Grayson would play absolutely zero sports. He's abs He's the biggest book nerd who does not do much. He's very... <laughs> Gray is a very big book nerd. He doesn't really do a crazy amount of sports or anything like that. If I did have to choose a sport for him to play, it would definitely be... It would not be curling. It would definitely be something like... Yeah, my boy, but doesn't... My boy's not active. He doesn't do much. Um, in terms of sports. If I had to pick something for him, it'd be something like... Something lame, like, like golf. Sorry, if you play golf, that's not not to not to not to bash on you. I can bully my son, it's fine. <laughs> Stand in front of his mom's door in the middle of the night, be like, Mom, I threw up. He would not go to his mother. <laughs> that was a very long permeating joke that did happen on webtoon though i found like six comments that, like i found a bunch of comments that were just mom i threw up with the emoji the standing emoji i feel like that was a top comment was it i don't remember on that page that's fine let's see i don't remember I'm kind of curious now because I don't remember. It's been a while. I don't always check my <laughs> my comments. I probably should. That was page twenty. What? I don't remember. Oh. It wasn't a top comment. I don't think. There's the emetophobia warning. Yeah, it wasn't a top comment, but I remember saying them. What world is golf lamer than curling? Grayson can literally use a broom and sweep in curling. Yeah, but curling has more action. It's like then, because you have like people skating. I also really like skating. So like anything ice related, I like more. Golf is like you stand there, you hit the thing, and you walk to the next portion. It's the slowest, like, bro, there's no action. It's literally just, <laughs> it's so boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My cousin was also a curler, so I guess, like, I'm a little biased, but... Sorry, I don't like golf. It's <laughs> I know a lot of people who like golf, and I'm I I can't I can't empathize. I'm like sorry, I I don't get it. Uh, here's another reason why I'm working with um. Oh my god, which swatch is it? That's his nails. Where's the skin? There we go. Um, it's because all my swatches are here, so this is where I get all my flat colors from, so I don't have to constantly repick them so i have a whole huge set of swatches for all the characters that have popped up so far um or that have popped up or that will pop up so i have them all there for me to use for future use um many bank obviously doesn't have that it doesn't have an area for or it does it has an area for you to put in your 
swatches, but like, I haven't done that. Okay, gotta open up a different file real quick. Yeah, this one has it. Poor boy, I love him. Gotta go, sorry, bye. That's all right, Sleepy, thanks for joining. I'm sorry, golf sucks, but still, no, I'm sorry, I can't agree. Golf is certainly worse than curling for me. To be fair, I'm just not a sports person. I don't care for sports, like, at all. Oops. Oh, that's the wrong, there we go. I don't think you could get me to really care for sports all that much. Let's turn off this layer real quick. I had a friend, an ex friend, who used to really, really, who was like a really, really sports person. And they were like, their whole family was very into sports. My family was very artsy. So it was like really, really, it was a weird juxtaposition. Their dad always had like hockey jerseys everywhere. He had a Boston one framed. I don't know anything about hockey, but... <laughs> oh, don't tell me that messed up something else. Okay, we're good. But yep, so after I've done my lines, I've kind of done all my flat colors, that's when I start to put in my... the actual flat colors. So usually I just have that first flat pass to make sure that I can alpha lock everything. Um, so then I can color it in afterwards properly, usually with the paint bucket. Uh, but obviously for no program has their paint bucket perfectly worked out. Um, so usually you have to make minor edits here and there. Um, that's no biggie though. I don't really care. It's like, it's, that's an inevitability. It's like program crashes. That's an inevitability. It doesn't matter what program you use. It's going to crash at some point in your life. Um, <laughs> Photoshop has crashed for me. CSP has crashed for me. Medibang has crashed for me. I've had, it's just an inevitability. <laughs> it happens. But, um, and I've lost my work before, but I, they don't, none of them crash on me very often, so. It's just because I have a fairly powerful computer, but yeah. I can take a lot at once. Something about hockey players, toothless smiles. You got it right, toothless is, toothless is right. Hockey to a dentist player. Um, or a dentist to a hockey player. That and, like, um, baseball players as well. If they get hit in the teeth. I guess hockey players is a little bit more common, though. So this is one of the shortcuts that I take a lot when it comes to illustrating these comics. So just flat coloring and everything. Some people copy paste panels and zoom in on them. I could never do that. I'm a really big stickler for my, um, no, where is the, no, not Smokey. Smokey's the cat. Where's the free? There it is. Um, I'm a really big stickler for page quality. Which is not to say, like, they're low quality if they copy it over, um, but it misses with the, the rasterization of the, the image. I can't deal with that. That's something I can't live with. <laughs> so I'm like, listen, I, I'm not going to do that. It's like, it's definitely, like, it's definitely quicker in a lot of regards, but from, like, whoops, I clicked twice. But like certainly from like a like a quality 
stickler standpoint, I could never do that. I don't have exciting weekend plans. Not really. What am I doing this weekend? Like nothing. I feel like I, I feel like I'm, I'm happy that I'm doing that. No, I'm working. That's right. I, just, <laughs> I have to do my job. That's all. <laughs> I swear I had something else I was doing this weekend. I don't even remember. Nice hands. Thank you. Uh, we're an IS art. I literally forgot the mid plug. It's 10 minutes till the end. It's whatever. The only toothless anybody I want to see is toothless Night Fury from How to Train Your Dragon. Super true. That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> when I heard toothless, I'm like, oh, the dragon. Omicron. Put a quick end to all my plans real quick. Omicron? Isn't that a transformer? On a t <laughs> Isn't that like a letter in the Greek alphabet? Hang on. Oh! My bad. True. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, I just googled it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't check the news anymore. I've I've given up. <laughs> Oh, I should actually just get rid of this real quick. Where is his halo color? Excuse me, what? Don't I? Do I not have this swatch? I swear I did. That's not epic. Hang on. I thought I had this swatch. I guess I don't. Oh, there it is. Why is it all the way up there? Now let's switch that. That should be like down here. Yeah, that feels better. Why is it all the way up there? His swatches are down there. What's the daytime? I don't really think he needs a separate layer for the... Yeah, this should be fine. Pool party in the winter. <laughs> Valid. I have to work. To, to me, the week starts on Friday, ends Tuesday. Really? Uh, yeah, no, I, uh... I don't think I have any free days anymore. <laughs> Can't wait to see my boy Omicron take the Master Spark from Megatron. You know who I was thinking of? I was thinking of Unicron. That sounds pretty similar. If you don't know who Unicron is... No, Unicron. Transformers. Yeah, he's a giant planet. Yeah. But like OG Unicron. I don't know what they're talking about in like the yeah. He's like a big planet. And like he eats other planets. I don't know what they were doing with the Michael Bay ones. I'm sorry. I thought those movies sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Let me lock this. Change the color of this. Yeah, I think I'll only get to the, the flat coloring for this. It's actually not bad. It's farther than I thought I'd get. Because I tend to work especially slow with my comic pages. Because it's a lot of thinking. A lot of thinking. <laughs>
Transformers the movie, but the animated one voiced by the late Leonard Nimoy. I don't know who voiced the original. I'm thinking of like the 1980 one. Where like Megatron becomes the other one. I don't remember his name. Galvatron, that's it. He becomes Galvatron. And Starscream like dies and then comes back to life as a new Transformer. I don't know. There was a scene with trumpets. <laughs> Oh yeah, and Megatron died. That was one of them. That's not a spoiler. This movie is from the 1980s. <laughs> it was like over 40 years ago by now. Um, all I wanted is Open Star Racer sequel. I don't even know what that is. <sighs> Sorry if you heard like the crack in like every bone that I have. Sorry. <laughs> Also, I forgot to get a glass of water, so my voice is kind of, like, out of it right now. So don't mind me. I'm a little out of whack right now. The thing with comics is like a lot of my characters' palettes and outfits and whatever are predetermined. So I know what they'll look like and I know how they'll dress and how they'll act and all that, right? So it's not like I have to determine it on the spot. I also have stylistic rules that I follow for my comic. You need to make sure that you're consistent. Obviously, as an artist, you're gonna develop and grow as you draw, but you need to make sure that your artistic rules stay generally the same throughout the entire run of the comic. Um, there will be things that like switch up and there will be things that kind of develop and change, but it has to be gradual. It can't be a sudden like, and it's different. There are some comics that do that, but that's only because the artist changes for each thing, i.e. like Marvel, DC. The characters themselves still look the same each time, but the stylistic approach might be different for each one. So you need to make sure that, like, you know what you're doing. I think I am going to reline that. Something about that, that irks me. I'm probably going to have to flip it, check later. Taking Grayson's color scheme. Thank you. Uh, blonde, blue-eyed boy. Type B. <laughs> He's not very original looking. I've kind of, I've probably kind of solidified that with the amount of um, blonde, bulk-headed boys that I get sent. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with that. I think I've given up on making all of my characters look super original. That's a fear that a lot of people have. Is like, oh my god, my character is not the most original thing in the world. Thing is, though, is that I think that orig originality is a sham. It's like, it's really hard to do anything that's like completely new nowadays. So I find that it's better, other than fretting over making your work ultra original, it's better to worry about making your art or your work full of heart. Some of the best characters are some of the most generic looking things ever. My favorite character joke, one of my favorite character tropes is the most generic, like, like the some of the most generic stuff ever. But it it's like, again, my favorite character tropes. I love, like, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm going to end it there. Um, but, you know, just don't, don't worry too hard about originality. Focus more on the goals that you want to achieve and how will you heighten that, you know? Because with comics, you're telling a story. How will you get people interested in that story? The design of the characters is one thing, but a design comes second to how you've written them, especially if it's something with a narrative. Some of my favorite web comics have like very subpar art a lot of the time. Like not to be mean about it, but it's true. There's one that I really love. Um, it's a comedy. It's it's a very absurd absurd comedy. It's a keep in manga. It's some of the it's the dumbest. Like I love reading those because it always feels like a trip. Like I'm reading it and you're like you don't know where it's gonna go. So you're just kind of like 
you're reading and like, okay, what are you throwing at me this week, you know? <laughs> This one I'm probably just gonna make a strip of color. I don't think I have to worry about a background for it. Um, oops, I forgot that. The handle. Now I can draw the background colors. And this is just gonna be black. It's not dark outside, but that's fine. This is going to be, what's the color of the walls? This is the wrong page. It's this color. And this one's just gonna be the color of the doors. Oh, there's actually the other handle right there too. Mod. See, and like you can't, with digital, it's gonna be compressed into a JPEG anyway. Actually, these get compressed to a PNG, so it's, um, so it can be read by the website, but you won't be able to tell the, all the layers that I've used either, regardless. This is going to be just the color of the floor. Oh, I'm going to need the working file on it. Oh, this is the working file, my bad. Beautiful. Oh, let's make this a an emotion shot, so then I can like, because this is a clo this is a close up, so I can do a dark colored background for the. Oops. I want to make this one an emotion shot too, huh? Should I? No, you know what? Let's not get lazy. Let's actually do a... Not get too lazy over here. <laughs> the demon can talk, right? What does he sound like to you? Zareth to me has always just sounded like some guy. <laughs> Zareth, like, I think all the demons just sound like people to me. I don't like... I don't have like any like demonic voice pattern in my brain. I to me they just sound like people. Like Zareth to me kind of has the energy of somebody who would sound like Christopher Walken. I don't know why. Like it's just kind of like how like I don't have any voice claims. I've never done a voice claim before. I don't plan on it. Um, but yeah, to me like Zareth kind of has the energy of somebody who would sound kind of like Christopher Walken. I'm not super certain why, but like that's just kind of where my brain went. Oh, does this mean I have to draw the pews? I gotta figure out the perspective for this. I guess I do. I'll do that afterwards. I guess I could just show you guys. So, like, what I would do is I would get the... I'd lock that, and I wouldn't worry about lines. The thing is, is that I know that this background's gonna be blurred. So, I'm not gonna spend forever on it. I'm just gonna draw it in. So, if this is the background... Oh, if this is the angle that I'm going for... And that should be like that. The carpet should be this color. So if he's coming in that way. I'm fudging this perspective because it's going to be blurred, so it doesn't matter. It's also not going to be in the forefront, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you hear me talk about all these basics all the time. Here's me telling you that a lot of it, you got to know your shortcuts. Because sometimes it doesn't matter. Um... People will hate it if you say that, though. Um, but in this case, it really doesn't. Because it's going to be blurred. Who cares? Nobody will see it. Nobody's going to pay attention. Because um, most people won't be zooming in here. Oh my god, I'm over time. Okay, hang on. Some guy. Very inspiring, yeah. Okay, let me just finish this up and then we can get a move on. Yeah, so this is just going to be completely blurred. So it's not like... It's gonna be in your face or anything. I can hear things going on outside. I don't know what's happening now. Well. 
so no modulated deep voice. Sometimes normal voices can make the monster more creepy. Oh, he's not. Do you know what? I guess it's not a spoiler. None of the demons are evil. <laughs> like, it's not really a spoiler. It's it, like it's been established at this point because I guess if you run the Instagram run, it's public. None of the demons are evil. Zareth, this guy, he's very goofy. Um. He's very much like an overzealous anime character. I guess it's the way that I can describe him the best. Um, Gulrathel is very much like the kind of tired older brother who's just kind of trying his best. He's a bit, uh, he's kind of a troll, but he's not like evil or anything. None of the none of the demons are evil. That's not who the evil is in this story. Evil, quote unquote. There's no evil in this story, but it's there are antagonists again. The story is realistic fiction. It's not a it's not a pure fantasy. I remember some people telling me, they were like, I wish, I thought that this was going to be a pure, like, horror. And I was like, it was. But unfortunately, you don't know me that well, because I, I don't write pure horror anymore. <laughs> yep, so then I just blur it. Oh, you know what? I'd probably blur it afterwards, after I do the shading in there. Yep. I wouldn't worry about this. I'd go back down here. Go back to this background. Fix this. And then I'm done. Yeah, it's no modulated deep voice. Nope. None of the monsters have that. There are... The monsters in this story are not evil. Nobody's really evil. There really isn't an evil. There are some characters that are, like, annoying. And there's some characters that are, like, meant to be more antagonistic. But there's none that are, like, evil, you know? Okay. Oh, one more thing. Let's just fix the table and then we're good. What's the color of this book? I don't remember. Yeah, none of these none of these guys are meant to be like spooky scary skeletons kind of be type B, you know. Okay. I guess you're getting the flat colored version for the end of this stream. So that's going to do it for this stream, guys. Thank you so so much for joining. Um hopefully that was interesting. You know, just kind of work watching me work on this page. <laughs> Obviously it's not complete. Uh you'll see it complete in a couple of weeks. Um but yeah, thanks so, so much for joining again. If you don't know too much about the studio, you've been here for the first time. We are not just an art channel. We are also an art school. So if you'd like to check out the classes that we have to offer, be sure to check them out on our website. Um, I am one of the instructors. Winter camps are coming up in like two weeks. I think you can still sign up, but I don't know. Um, so if you'd like to check those out, I am teaching the teen intensives. So my classes are a little bit trickier, um, but we do have easier classes if you're not too much into the more intense ones. Um, this file that you see in front of you, um, I am going to post it on Discord, but we might not actually post it on our on our social media. I will have to talk about that. But um, this will be available on the... The unfinished version will be available on our Discord. Um, you'll be able to check it out there. Um, as a JPEG, keep it, save it. Do whatever you want with it. Um, oh, on our Discord. There we go. Uh, keep it, save it. Um, I don't think you can repost it. Just because... Please don't. <laughs> don't don't do too much with this one um but the jpeg i'm kind of nervous posting this as a jpeg anywhere anyway um so this one will be up there for you on the discord um unfortunately not this file i'm not comfortable with uploading the working file for this one on our patreon but there are other working files on our patreon that you can check out for a minimum of five dollars a month over there um and there will be my other working files that we've worked on throughout the stream um the streams so if you'd like to check those out um then be sure to check them out on Patreon and support the channel. Um, but yeah, y'all, uh, what is next week? Next week is, um, oh, oh, we're starting our Q&A series next week. Um, so the Q&A series is literally going to be, you guys get to ask me whatever questions you want about the topic and I will answer them and make mini tutorials during the stream. So and next week is all about people, people, anatomy, faces, hands, whatever you want. 
ask me questions on how to draw them, I will answer them. I'll give you mini tutorials based off of what you want. Um, so that's what the Q&A streams are. Um, but yeah, thanks so, so much for joining y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.